Well, hello everybody. It's another wonderful day, another great day for us to thank God for His goodness. Uh, as always, I give the Lord praise for what He's doing in my life and my family, and I pray your family is blessed, brother. And just know that I always pray for you, intercede for you, and when I come to you, I come to you because, number one, God loves you, and I love you. So today, as we've been talking about faith and, and believe in the Lord, we're going to talk today about act on the Word of God. All right, and I want you to pay uh, close attention to these definitions because they're going to play out in my teaching today as I talk about uh, acting the Word of God. We're going to talk about what does it mean to act on God's Word. You know, you can be a hearer and not a doer. In order to be successful in the kingdom of God, you've got to be a hearer and a doer. There must be a continuity between what I hear and what I do. That produces faith in an action sense, okay? So, the word act is defined as to take action, perform, execute, apply, put into operation, uh, put into action. That's the word act. I want you to get this because this is going to play out as I share today what it means to act on the word of God. Again, it means to execute, all right, to apply something, all right. So by maintaining corresponding thoughts. In other words, you act on God by maintaining corresponding thoughts. I did a teaching on corresponding actions, so it kind of goes in line with what, I was, what I've been teaching already. So, by maintaining corresponding thoughts, I act on God's word. Here's the deal. In other words, um, I have to make a decision that I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue in the process, I'm going to continue to perform. I'm going to continue to execute. I'm going to continue to apply the word. Real talk, all right? I got to manage my emotions in my mind, in my disposition, so I can continue in the process, all right? So that means we must manage, hear this today, we must, man we must manage our thought life. Uh, you know, it's, it's probably going to shock you, uh, but the truth of the matter is, you and I really have control of our thoughts. Controlling our thoughts is not anyone else's responsibility. Now, we can be conditioned to respond a certain way to life, but the truth of the matter is, it is our responsibility to control our thoughts. So i got to manage my thought life, man. Because sometimes you're looking a certain way, but inwardly you're thinking a different way. So you got to manage your thought life, all right? We must maintain corresponding thoughts. Here it is in agreement with what we were confessing. So I confess something, now I must maintain the thoughts. It's amazing to me how people can be in a crowd of folk, whether it's a motivational seminar or, you know, you in some form on education or business or in church, whatever the form you're in, in environment you're in, uh, so to speak, and, and, and you fire it up in the moment. I mean, you've taken all kind of notes, you've highlighted this and highlighted that, but then what happens, unfortunately, and we all are guilty of this. All of us are guilty of this. We go to conferences and we go to training sessions, but then we leave. There's a major breach in terms of execution. You've taken these classes and training sessions, and then when it's, when it's time to execute, we fall way short on execution. So here's the thought. I have to maintain corresponding thoughts and agree with what I'm confessing. If I confess I'm above and not beneath, I got to think above. I confess I was born to win, born to overcome. I have to, have to maintain that confession daily, all right? If we don't manage our thought life, we will allow logic, reasoning, and circumstances to overrule our faith. That's a fact. Overrule. It's almost a legal term, really. When you don't manage your thought life, we will allow logic, reasoning, and circumstances to overrule our faith. Listen to this. Never forget when you take bold action, the devil will come and oppose your words and actions with question. The devil is good at that. I mean, he, he, he had a conversation with Eve and said, the Lord didn't mean what he said. He didn't mean that. He said, you're just like God. Well, he fell for that trick. She fell for it. You all, in other words, uh, God has lied to you. He didn't mean what he said. So the devil works. It gets you thinking the word isn't true, that God's forgotten about you, forsaken you. That's not the case. And we all have had moments where we question what God is doing, what he's really up to. We've got to trust him. 
all right? The devil's purpose is to plant doubt and unbelief that's designed to challenge your confession. He's there somewhere ready to challenge you, what you said God's going to do in your life. You said God's called you to ministry. God's going to bless your business. You're going to be successful. Guess what? You have an adversary. You have an adversary. The Bible says he's as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Scripture says, 2 Corinthians says, uh, verse 3 says, chapter 10, he says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not corner, but mighty through God. Pulling down the stronghold. Where are strongholds? In your head. That's where they are. In your mind. He says, casting down imaginations and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Do what? And bringing every thought. Every thought. Got to reel your thoughts in. He says, reel your thoughts in. Bring your thoughts into, into captivity. Let me go back here. Any thought that rises against the knowledge of God, what you've been taught, what you've heard. He says, he says bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So in other words, I got to manage my thought life. I got to reel them in. Got to reel it in. You know, I don't know about you all, but in those breaking moments I've had experience, frankly, I got to, hey man, where you, where you going, man? Come back here. You got to reel your emotions in, reel your thoughts in, all right? So a couple of thoughts we're going to close. Number one, you can't believe right until you are thinking right. You can't believe right until you're thinking right, all right? Romans says, and let me just, uh, let me give you just a synopsis here. He says, well, he says, being not weak in faith, Romans 4, verse 19. He considered not his own body, now dead. This is talking about Abraham. When he was about 100 years old, neither yet deadness of Sarah's womb. But he staggered, not at the promise of God. That's a word for somebody. Through unbelief. So what unbelief does, unbelief causes you and I to stagger at the promises of God, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. That's what he says. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. The word perform means that God is able to finish what he started. In other words, God is going to deliver. He's going to bring to pass. He's going to cause what he said, what he said he would do to come to pass. So then when you talk about stagger, the word stagger means to waver. It means uh, without bending. Abraham did not bend. It's a powerful word because it also means that he was not agitated. He didn't allow his situation to agitate him and to get him off track. Let me share something with you. Something when, you, when you're persuaded, this is powerful teaching. The word persuade means assurance or to bring to full measure. He's persuaded. If God said he's going to do it, He's going to do it, all right? It means to be fully persuaded. In other words, uh, I believe God is going to do it. There's no doubt in my mind. Number two, second thought, maintaining corresponding speaking. You and I are byproduct of our thoughts, our words, and our actions, all right? So let's talk about what we say. Mark chapter 11, verse 23 says, For verily I say unto Jesus, said, verily I say unto you, that a whosoever shall say to this mountain, say to the mountain. He said, climb the mountain. He didn't say, beat the mountain. He said, speak to the mountain. Be thou removed. And be thou cast into the sea. And shall not doubt his heart. But shall believe that those things which he said or says shall come to pass. He shall have whatever he says. Wow, that's deep, man. You mean whatever I say, according to God's will, I'm going to have it? That's the word. I don't argue with God. I just walk it out and believe God, all right? So listen to this. Doubt literally means to suspend. When you doubt something or doubt a person, you doubt what they're saying. You doubt it can happen. You doubt that God can bring you out. That word doubt means to suspend. It means to be driven. Check this out. When, when you're in a place of doubt, it means to be driven by gusts or to fluctuate in midair. That means something is pulling you. Something is driving you from a place, a time, a season, a promise, a deliverance. Doubt 
is that state of mind that hesitates between the two contradictory conclusions. That's doubt. That's doubt. So, so let me finish up here. So, we must be clear when we are speaking in agreement with what we believe over and against what we say. So I, I must be clear. Even though I see something, I got to believe God. All right? When we see clearly what is going on, you are on purpose choosing to release your faith. When you, when you see what's going on, you decide that you know what? I'm going to believe God. I choose to believe God. And lastly, releasing your faith is a deliberate act of your will. I choose to believe God. Luke 12, Jesus said something very powerful. He says, but rather seek ye the kingdom of God. And all these things, he says, the Gentiles, don't worry about what you're going to eat, where you're going to sleep, um, uh, you know, where you're going to drive. He says, listen, the Gentiles have the same words. It's just deep. He says, he says, they have all these things. But check this out. He says, but rather seek the kingdom of God and these things shall be added. So seek the kingdom first. He said, whatever God has for you, you're going to get it. I'll, I'll add those things to you. It's no problem for God to bless you with a new house and give you a raise and bless you with your education. I mean, the list goes on and on. He said, but you got to believe me. He says, fear not, little flop, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God wants to bless you. But you got to trust him. You got to speak it. You got to say it. You got to live it. And you have to walk in concert in correspondence with your faith. Real talk with the bishop. Listen, God bless you. Hope you were blessed today. Hope your life has been impacted. As I always say, and I'll continue to say, share, share, share again with someone. God bless you.